Hello everyone, it's Neil here from 3D Tutor, back today with another tutorial. And in this one we're actually going to cover how to animate and create a flag. So here is the flag pole and this entire Blender file will be free to download. Just check out the link uh, down below. And if you want to give a donation to the channel, you're also free to do that. But if you don't, it's totally free to actually download. Okay, with that said, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is just make sure our cursor is in the center. So Shift S, cursor to world origin. And then what we're going to do is we're going to press Shift A and we're going to bring in a plane. And I'm going to spin this plane around. So R, X, 90. I'm going to press 1. I'm going to bring it up. And this plane is actually our flag. So let's make it a little bit bigger with the S button. Something like this sort of size, I think will be fine. And then what I'll do is I'll press tab, come to edge select, select this edge, and I'm gonna just pull it out just to the right scale that I actually want it. Now I'm gonna come back to face select, select the face, right click, subdivide, and now you'll have a little menu down here that actually should pop open. So just pop that open, and then let's put the number on cuts, something like 40. And what we've done there is allowed to put enough cuts in so that this flag can have a lot of movement. The more cuts you actually put in, the more movement the flag will actually have, and pro probably the more realistic it will actually look. So now let's attach this flag to this piece of rope. So let's come back to edge select. I'm going to grab this top edge here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this bullseye, which is proportional editing. And now I'm gonna grab this gizmo and pull it across. You'll see that I can pull it across. And if I hold it and move the mouse out, you can see that it will manipulate more of the mesh around it, depending on how big this circle is. So now let's pull it out and I'm just gonna try and put it in place. So I'm gonna let go and then I'm gonna bring it in again. So let's just grab this one, bring it in like that. And now let's work our way down, bringing the flag just against the rope. Okay, so that's all in place now. Now we can press tab, grab the flagpole, hide the flagpole, and now we can grab our flag, press tab once more, make sure you're in edge select. What you're gonna do is you're gonna click on one of these and then Alt, Shift, and click, and that's just gonna grab them going all the way up. And now what you wanna do is you wanna come across to your triangle and you wanna see where vertex groups is. I'm gonna press plus. I'm gonna rename this with double clicking and call it flag. And then I'm just gonna click assign. And basically what that's done is it's made a vertex group out of all these that are selected at the moment. And that is so we can actually pin this part of the flag to our rope. So now if I press tab, Alt H, and bring back my flagpole, and now I can actually give this flag some texture. So let's click on the flag, press the tab button again, press A, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna press one on the number pad, and that's gonna make sure that we're facing this straight on, press the U button and come down to where it says project from view. And that's basically just gonna unwrap it projected from this view. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is now bring in material. So let's come over to our materials button, which is this one here. Press the plus button, click new, and let's call this flag material. And let's come down now to where it says base color and you'll see a little dot here. Click that and then you'll be able to come down to where it says image texture. Let's now open up our image texture and this is basically going to be whatever image that you want on the flag. So let's click open and I've got mine here which is uh, this one here. So if I double click this and you'll see it looks something like that. Now at the moment obviously this UV um, of this flag is far too small. So let's go over to the UV editing and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it. So A, press the S button, and we're going to bring it out. I'm just going to turn proportional editing off. I don't need that on anymore. And let's have a look what that's looking like. Now, don't worry about it repeating. We're going to sort that out as well. Just make sure that you're happy with how the actual logo is in the center of the flag. So at the moment, I know I need to move it more over to this side. So if I press tab, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press G and X and just move it more into the center, something like that. Okay, so now how do we get rid of these on each side? We go to shading and you'll see you've got a node here. And if you come down where it says repeat, just click this button down and go to extend. And what that'll do is it'll just get those from each side and just make this in the middle. 
Okay, that's it for texturing. Let's go to layout now. And when you click on layout, you'll see there's a difference between layout and modeling. Modeling, you don't have actually out any animation bar down the bottom. And in layout, we actually do, which is gonna be very useful then for the next part. So now let's uh, click on our flagpole. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna come over to the physics tab, which is this one here. And you're gonna go over to rigid body constraint. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make sure that whatever um, hits against this is gonna actually bend around it. So our flag, for instance, when it drops down, is actually gonna interact with this flagpole. So now let's give the flag some physics as well. So click on your flag and give it a cloth physics and then come to nearly the bottom. And what you'll see is under this uh, shape, you'll see one called pin group. Click there and put flag. And then what's gonna happen is if I press spacebar now, you'll see that because we've pinned it and we've put a rigid body on, this flag hits against here and basically hangs from where we've pinned it. So let's just stop that a minute, put it back to zero, and you can see we do have some issues. First of all, um, it's not very smooth, this flag. It's very bumpy, so let's get rid of that. So we're going to right click, shade smooth. That's fixed that. And also now we want the flag to actually, on part of this uh, simulation to blow in the wind at the moment my simulation is on 500 yours will probably be on 250 so just set this to 500 like so and then also come across and you'll see that this simulation is also on 250 so set this to 500 as well and now we can bring in some wind so if we press shift a come down to where it says force field go across and you'll have one that's called wind let's bring you up pull it across and you can see at the moment the little arrow is pointing that way so let's turn it around so RY 90 let's turn it around the right way and at the moment you'll see the strength is on one now what we want to do is we want the flag to drop down and then start picking up wind speed a little bit of way into the simulation so how we do that is we'll set this to zero first and then we'll press I which is going to which is going to insert a keyframe. So what that's going to do is it's basically going to tell Blender, at frame zero, the strength of the wind is actually zero. So now let's come over to 100, and what we'll do is we'll tell Blender again that at frame 100, the strength of the wind is also going to be zero. And now we'll come to 150, and what we'll do is we'll tell Blender now that at 150, the strength of the wind is going to be 4,000. So press enter, and don't forget to press I when you're hovering over it. And now we'll go to frame 400. And you can also click on here to actually put the frame in. So if I put 400 in here, it'll take me straight to there. And let's put it on uh, 4000 as well. So we'll press I hovering over it. And finally, we'll come to frame 500. And what we'll do is we'll put this on zero again. And then we'll press I. And now we've got one, two, three, four, five keyframes. So now if we bring this back to zero, and I press spacebar, you'll see that the flag actually drops down. And then the wind will start picking up. And now you can see it's blowing in the wind like a realistic flag. When we get to uh, frame 400, the wind will die down. And finally, when we get to frame 500, the simulation will end and restart again at frame zero. So uh, that's it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give me a like. If you want to support the channel, check out the links below. And you'll also find down below links to actually all the courses that 3D Tutor produces. So happy modeling, everyone. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.